This FizCast is going to look at the resistivity of a piece of material and how to calculate the resistance of a particular arrangement. The questions asking for the length of a uniform wire made from a particular amount of a material, in this case copper, and there's a desired resistance between the ends of this wire. So we'll begin by interpreting the question. In this case we need to think about the fact that the material has a resistivity or we can think of it as a conductivity you might recall they're telling us the same basic properties of material and that using those properties the resistance of a particular piece of the material will depend upon how that material is arranged in this case if it's a wire it will depend upon the length of the wire and the area of the wire. Moving on to the develop stage, let's draw a fairly simple diagram here of our wire. We're told it's uniform so we can characterize it simply by a length and by an area that's the cross-section of this wire. We're assuming here that it's a cylindrical wire uh, and if it asked us for example for the radius or diameter that would be important but it turns out we really don't care what the cross-sectional area is, provided it doesn't change. And that's what the uniform description here is telling us. Then what we need to recall is that the resistance of a wire such as this will depend upon the resistivity, which typically has the symbol rho here, and it depends linearly upon the length and inversely upon the area. So this resistivity here might be a quantity that we need to look up in a table of data somewhere. So the resistivity for copper, it turns out in SI units, is 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8, and the units there are ohm meters. That's the unit for um, a resistivity. And we can see that the length and the area aren't exactly free parameters, both of these in this question, because we only have a certain amount of copper, 1.5 grams. So the length and the area here will actually combine to give us a volume and so we might need to know something about the relationship between the volume and the mass that we have here. So we might need to remember that the density tells us about the relationship between mass and volume. Unfortunately density typically has the symbol rho also. I'm going to call that rho prime for the time being. So rho prime will be our normal mass per unit volume and rho up here will be our resistivity. And that's a, a number that I can look up for this particular material. It turns out it's 8,960 kilograms per cubic meter for copper. And that means I can now write the volume of my wire. Whatever shape I make it in, it will have the same volume. It's going to have the same mass of material. That will be the mass divided by this density that I'm calling rho prime here. So these relationships here will be quite useful when I come to my evaluation step in my solution because I can write the volume of this wire here in terms of the area and the length. Again, whatever cross-sectional area it has, even if it's not cylindrical as I've drawn, that volume will simply be the area multiplied by the length. And I know that will be the mass divided by the density. Now, I've got two things I don't know here, the area and the length. So it might be useful to write one of them in terms of the other. I can now write that the area must be the mass divided by the length times the density. And then I can use that expression in my relationship between resistance and resistivity. to say this will now be the resistivity rho multiplied by the length divided by the area. And for the area, I can write mass divided by length times density, uh, all of which gets me to uh, something that looks a bit like the uh, resistivity times the density times L squared divided by the mass. And now I'm feeling a bit more comfortable because all of these quantities here, the resistance, the mass, the resistivity, the density, these are all quantities that I actually know from my problem. And L is the quantity that I'm looking for. So I can rearrange that to say that the length of the wire in this case will be um, the resistance times the mass divided by the density times the resistivity and that's all under a square root sign 
and now I can put those values in. Um, the resistance that I'm looking for is 0 0.8 ohms. The mass here is 1.5 grams, and so I should put that in SI units, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, divided by the density, which was 8960 kilograms per cubic meter, multiplied by the resistivity, which was 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters, and I want the square root of that. When I do that calculation, it comes out to be 2.8. I've done everything in SI units, but I will actually check in a minute to make sure my calculation does give me an answer in meters. That's to two significant figures. Um, I really only had my resistance that was required to two significant figures, so that's that's a reasonably appropriate precision to give. And it seems, well let's think about our assessment step, we'll move up a little bit here. It seems perhaps not unreasonable, I'm not entirely sure what a, a 0.8 ohm uh, resistance wire should look like, but 2.8 meters, it's not a wire that has to be kilometers long, that would be a hard one to imagine using 1.5 grams of copper, and it's not a wire that's only uh, microns long, 2.8 meters. But just to make sure that we haven't done anything too incorrect in our rearrangement of these quantities here, let's check the units. In this expression that I had here, I had resistance times mass divided by density times resistivity, and I took the square root of that. So let's just check the units of that. The units of resistance we have here are in ohms, and the unit of mass is in kilograms, divided by this density here, which was in kilograms per cubic meter, uh, multiplied by my resistivity, which was in ohm meters, and that was all under a square root sign. So my ohms cancel top and bottom quite nicely, Similarly with the kilograms, I have meters to the minus 3 times meters. That will actually give me meters squared, and it's all under a square root sign. So the units that I have here are meters, which is what I expected them to be. One last check might be to make sure the behavior of this expression is what I would think. Um, if I was to have uh, a larger resistance that I was requiring for my wire, I would need to make it longer as R increased. and the relationship here between length and area tells me that my resistance will increase as the length increases and of course therefore the area must decrease for a given amount of material. Um, also my length would change if I had uh, a material with different resistivity. If I had a lower resistivity that would mean I'd actually need to stretch it out even further so a smaller value of rho on the bottom line here would give me a larger value for L. So the relationship here actually seems to go in the right direction.